of the day, Tony. What you see in history isn't necessarily something that's going to repeat in the coming years. So yeah. when you look at the history from the 1990, say 1990 to the year 2000, or from the year 2000 to 2010, yes. or from 2010 to 2020, even though you've got a population growth, even though you've got an increase in property prices, and it's always been an up, there's never been a 10 year period where it's gone down, the number that you assign to it, you might think that in one 10 year period, prices have gone up 200%, and in another 10 year period, prices have gone up 10%. No, that's yes. never true. It's never gone up just 10%. But from everything I've seen and all the statistics we're gonna run through, you might yes. see a 10 year period going up 100%, in other words, doubling in money, or 200%. Right. In other words, not just doubling, but tripling, quadrupling, tripling. et cetera. So you could really have a massive increase in property, but just because it happened 10 years ago, doesn't mean it's going to happen in the next 10 years. So that's my little disclaimer. Yeah. Now let's have a look at a unit in Darlinghurst Road, which is in the Sydney yes. CBD. It's um, about one minute drive to the center of Sydney. If, uh -huh. you, um, if you look at the numbers, purchased 1997, sold 2010. Yes. The purchase price was 137. Three years. We're, we're always mm -hmm. talking thousands of dollars. So when I say 137, yes. it's 137,000 Australian dollars. 137,000 dollars, yeah. So 137 purchase, 229 sell. And that's from a period of 1997 to 2010. So that's 13 years. So, Again, yes. a, another house close to it. A, again, a unit, sorry, not a house. Sussex Street, yes. Sydney, about two minutes drive to the local business district. Um, mm -hmm. Purchased in the year 2000, sold in 2011. So that's 11, 11 years. So 11 years. 360 to 550. So again, mm -hmm. neither of those have doubled. Then we have no. Pitt Street in Sydney, again, another unit. Purchased 2002. Yes. Uh, sold 2011, 290 to 368. So. Again, it didn't double. So what do we learn mm. from this? There's things behind the scenes that you have to think about. Were the units yes. occupied? Did they have tenants? Were the tenants paying on time? Were the units renovated or unrenovated? During that period of time, was any money spent to increase the value? So if the old carpets were stripped out and floorboards polished and a new kitchen went in and a new bathroom went in, that's expense in the materials, expense in labor to build it, but also expense because during the times you're doing the renovation, you're missing the rent for those weeks, months, hopefully yes, not well, years. Like renovating. You're, you're missing out <laughs> on the rent for those times. So if you think about a unit increasing in value, what actually increases? And the interesting thing in those three properties, they are in the Sydney CBD. The incomes in the Sydney CBD have gone up dramatically within that 10 year period. Absolutely dramatically. They have. The average income's gone up dramatically. The minimum income's gone up dramatically, which means that the tenants can afford to pay more. So the rents went up somewhat, but not as dramatically as some of the regional areas. Now let's have a look at ah. the comparison between that and two Randwick properties. Let's look at Avoca Street and Barker Street. So purchased 2011. This is Barker Street. Oh, sorry, yes. Avoca Street first. Mm -hmm. Avoca Street purchased 2011. <laughs> yes. Yes. Avoca Street purchased 2011, sold 2018. So I'm looking at the wrong line, aren't I? Beg your pardon. Uh, 16, 2016. 2016. Uh, Avoca Street, purchased 2011, sold 2016. Purchase price yes. at 580, sold at 800. Mm -hmm. So that yes. period of time is only a five year period. So we're not looking at 10 or 13 years. A shorter years. period of time. A mm -hmm. much shorter period of time. So going from 580 to 800, that's a substantial jump. If you double yes. that time to 10 years, that'll take you through to a 600 roughly a 600,000 increase, which is roughly double, wow. right? So that's a 10 year in Randwick. Looking at oh. the other Randwick property, uh, Barker Street, 2014 yes. to 2021, mm -hmm. that's a seven year 
increase and that has doubled. So that's 1.5 yes. million to 3 million. Now, what yes. is the difference between the unit in Avoca Street and the house at Barker Street? Mm -hmm. The unit at Avoca Street went up 220,000 in a five year period. Yes. 580 is the mm -hmm. purchase price and it went up 220. Yes. It had but... substantial renovation. Exactly. So as we said last mm. time, that unit was converted from a two bedroom unit to a three bedroom unit. To a three it bedroom. Had, yeah, a two bedroom unit to a three bedroom unit. It had substantial carpet change, kitchen change, bathroom change, just about everything that could be done to make it more usable was done to it before selling. So the question is, ah. is the 220 increase just the suburb increase or is it manufactured growth? And that's the bite because you've spent so much just to convert from one to the other. Just like we said before, Tony, you spent money on the renovation, money on the time and labor time to do the renovation yes. and the lost rent during that time. So you've spent three different amounts of money or time just to do that little increase in value. Now, if there was no increase, there's a possibility that that unit wouldn't sell. So when supply and demand is in such a very um, liquid area like the city, you actually have so many more properties that are exchanging hands that the buyers and the sellers have a lot of comparables. And what that means is that if you are looking for a unit, you can buy a one-year-old unit, a five-year-old unit, a 50-year-old unit, or a 20-year-old unit. And right. the price difference between them is going to be dramatic. So if you're buying a unit that you're thinking of renovating later, and it's not a brand new unit, but it's already an existing unit, think about mm -hmm. what part of it depreciates because the land might increase in that suburb, but the building keeps getting older and older. And that means two things. First of all, eventually you're going to need to knock down the building and build a new one. Second of all, to maintain the building in just regular operating state without leaks and rising damp and all the scary things, you will need to spend mm. more money on your strata. So some strata units, when they're brand new, seem to be expensive compared to an older unit with no facilities. Yes. But normally mm -hmm. the new ones include a swimming pool or a gym or lifts. If you find a strata unit that's brand new, that's just been built, but doesn't include paying strata for the extra things like the swimming pool, the lifts, the um, yes. gardening you'll always pay, but the lifts, the swimming pools, the gymnasiums, the then you have to compare, then you can compare apples with apples and find something that you're only depreciating the building and right. the cost of depreciation goes towards your sinking fund. So properties that are units or apartments or even some townhouses with strata have a sinking yes. fund where part of the money you're putting in is just the administration of the insurances, the management, etc. But the other part builds up every year into a sinking fund that the owners vote on how to use it every year, two years, five years, 10 years. So quite often you have a plan and that's something that homeowners don't realize because when you're buying yeah. a house, it's up to you to put together the plan. So when I do my that's numbers, right. the where's the beast blueprint still uses both the calculations. So I'm looking at strata, admin fees, what's in the bank already, comparing that to a freestanding house and how in what period of time or how often would I need to repaint the externals? How often would I need to repair the roof or replace the roof? What about the fencing? What are the ongoing costs that owning a house is going to be compared to owning a unit? Which brings me so, to... I mean...